Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we are making a spatula. Uh, a good spatula is something that is hard to come by with a nice sharp edge so you can cut with it as well as scooping underneath things. Uh, you can get the silicone ones, but I really like a wooden one. And so I've been wanting to make one for a while that fits my own style. This is a quick, easy project that most people can make in just a couple hours in the shop. Now to make this, I'm only going to be using a chisel, a spoke shave, and a card scraper. And that is it for the cutting tools. So um, if you want to follow along with that, great. Otherwise, you can always use a saw to cut things out and get a little closer and a little bit easier. We're going to have a little bit of fun following the wood and making a spatula. Let's dive in. A wooden spatula. Not something you see every day, but a fun tool to have in the kitchen. And it has many, many uses from scraping out pots to flipping things over to being a slight chopping surface, um, especially when we're using ground beef or eggs. I, I, I like having a good flat, sharp edge on the bottom of this so that you can use it to, uh, to chop what is in the dish without hurting any Teflon or any coating on your pots and pans. This one I am going to be making out of hard maple. This is a scrap sent to me by a fan, and I have been holding onto it for a long time and I haven't found a good use for it, but this finally came out. There's a little bit of spalting in here and a little bit of curl to it, not a whole lot, but just enough to make it uh, a nice piece to work with. The grain undulates in this a good ways, and I really wanted to kind of follow the grain and go with a pattern that the wood chose. And so when I laid it out, I tried to follow the flow of the grain and just kind of gave that a basic idea of what I want to do. Now normally I would put in a bunch of stop cuts with a saw, but because I'm limiting myself to just a chisel, that means I have to cut in from one side and then turn around and cut in from the other side so that I don't split out one side or the other. And if you chop in slowly from one side to the other, you can cut down to just about any depth you want. Then once it's in, we can come in and smooth out all the grooves with the spoke shave. But I'll be getting into that a little bit more in the future. Here it looks like I'm putting a lot of force into it. I'm actually just trying to keep my knuckles off of the bench since it's so close here. And uh, scraping it down a little bit to see what's underneath. Now the backside, I had to take a lot off. And you're going to see a lot here where chunks go flying and pieces pop off. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to let the grain do the work. Uh, you don't have to chisel every piece out. If you can break it off, it saves you a lot of time. You just have to make sure that the grain is going the direction you want it to go. And sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. And if you let that kind of play into the dictates of how the finished product will look, you'll be a lot happier. And as you can see here, I'm going past the line. Oh no, well the line's really just kind of there as a guideline. As we all know, there are more guidelines than rules anyways. So as I go, I'm just going to be checking it, feeling it, seeing, you know, is this the shape I want? Do I want to take off more over here? Just bringing it down into its rough shape, um, a two-dimensional uh, cutout shape. And it, it's the, the hardest parts are cutting across the end grain. If you look back when I first started, that was the first chunk I did right across the nose and then I can end with that tailpiece. Now I want to thin out both the handle section and the top, and so it's easier just to chalk it up in the vise and then chop down and let the grain flow with it. And so the, the, uh, the handle has a curvature to it in and out, and you can see how it runs with the grain. Makes it a little easier to work with the spoke shave then because then you can kind of flow with the grain. You're not always going against or with the grain. You're usually going right alongside the grain. Same thing on the, the flat end. I want to chop this down. Eventually I'm going to be shaping this down to basically a knife point. So I'm taking off a lot of material here, letting it flow, letting it go with the grain, just making sure that uh, the grain I choose isn't going to take it too far. And uh, in some places I, I get a little bit too far, but most of the time, as long as I'm looking at the grain ahead of time, I know that I'm, I'm okay with that. It, it's going pretty well. So the, the chisel can be used as an axe or a fro to split the wood, but then you can also use it to, to scrape and plane the wood as well. Now that we've gotten it roughly to shape, we're going to bring in the spoke shave. And after working with it a little bit, I realized, eh, it's dull. Um, now I did a video all about spoke shaves, which I'll try and leave a link to that down below. Um, but I forgot to mention in that about using a uh, vice grip to hold on to the small pieces, especially like this small one. It's really, really hard to hold onto this one with your fingers. So hooking, hooking it on the, the, the vice grips make it really nice. It becomes, well, a honing guide basically. Then we can put it back in and put it to use. And it's amazing how much a sharp edge really makes everything better. There is less chatter, there's less skipping, uh, it runs easier, it catches the grain, and uh, it just it feels good. There's that, that vibration that you're looking for, or not vibration, it's a smooth, clean cut. On uh, the large flat surfaces, it's a little bit more difficult because you're cutting a larger area. So I'm actually making it slightly convex 
So there's a bit of a rounded surface to it. On the back here, I was originally trying to make it big and tall, like some of the Scandinavian spoons, but I thought, no, I really want to thin this out and make it something thinner. So I'm very carefully here chopping down in, trying not to break the spoon, but then thinning it out, taking out a lot of material with the chisel, and then I can come back in with a spoke shave and remove a little bit more. As you can see, chopping in from one end on the other side, and I've turned it around in here, I'm chopping it from the other side. And then here, I actually want to start thinning out that head even more tapering it down, putting a bit of a curvature on the back, making sure that is what I want. Now I'm going to clamp the head into the vise and go to town on the spoke shave. And this is where I can really bring in that final shape. Um, it is going to be slightly faceted because the spoke shave is a straight blade, but it gets it really, really close. And uh, with a bit of work here, you can get it to that shape, the feel you want, and occasionally grab it and feel how it goes. Working on the very end uh, is a little bit more difficult. You just have to play with it and let it pop out and enjoy the process. Then work those same grains all the way down. Sometimes you're pushing, sometimes you're pulling. You're going to let it uh, let the grain dictate the direction that the plane needs to work with and get used to trying it with both. If you have a shave horse, this is a great time to use a shave horse. It works really, really well there. Um, but for something small like this, I, I think that even with the shave horse, I generally would use the bench more um, just because it, it holds a small piece but each to their own. Now we can flip it around and start working on the head. I want to bring the head down to a chisel point. And so I'm literally going to chop off little bits here until I get it down to a really fine point. It's about 16 an inch wide all the way across the top. And then we can use the spoke shave to thin it down and get past all of those split out marks, clean it up. If you find vibrations going in one direction, you can rotate the plane 45 degrees or 90 degrees, and then it will cut across those vibrations and you can get rid of them and it marks out of the wood. So it's gonna be a lot of just going back and forth and spoke shave here, spoke shave there, push and pull, listen to the grain, listen to the wood and go where it needs to be. In some places you can use a chisel. I know here it looks like I'm diving towards my hand. I'm really not, uh, it's just the angle of the camera. Keep your hand out of the way, but you can use a chisel to do what the spoke shave does, just takes a little more time. Now with all the facets left from the spoke shave, it is really easy to bring in a curved card scraper here, and this will give you that buttery smooth surface that uh, it would take you a long time with sanding. And you, you can actually be finished ready right off of the card scraper. I didn't take any sandpaper to this afterwards, just use the card scraper and smooth it out. You can see the, sh the shavings falling off. You're not just scratching it in dust, you're actually cleaning it with shavings. It's, it, it is a planing device. Um, yeah, it makes wood curl off of that. I do have a bunch of videos on sharpening card scrapers and how I do that, especially with the curved ones. Um, it can be a little bit difficult, but once you master that, it, it does some amazing things. Then you can use the flat edge to do some of the larger areas where the curve can't get at and play it back and forth, smooth the whole thing out and have some fun. This is where you can really spend some time and feel it and see where is the grain going, are there any last minute things I need to do, and occasionally I'll come back in with a smoke shave and I'll clean up some spots because the spoke shave can't always, uh, the, the card scraper can't always take off a lot of material. And there was a bit of a bump here, so take the spoke shave in, clean it out, bring back the card scraper, smooth it down, and uh, yeah, um, this, is, this is a lot of fun, and I could see myself doing this all day long. Oh, by the way, if you want to join us, we do live videos for patrons and uh, members. So um, we try and do those whenever we do a, uh, uh, a, a shooting day where we shoot videos in the shop. So, yeah. Now on to boiled linseed oil. Now, this isn't store-bought boiled linseed oil. This is my homemade boiled linseed oil. I have videos on how to make your own. Um, it doesn't have the chemical dryers that you get with the store-bought stuff. So it is perfectly safe for food-grade work. Now, as when making any tool, you have to show it at, at work, and uh, since it's a spatula, we decided to make some eggs. <laughs> cook them up with a little bit of butter, a little bit of salt, and let them go. Now, I like to actually cook mine with the whites mostly cooked, and then break them apart. I don't like to scramble them completely and make it a homogenous color. That just makes it look like you poured it out of a jug. Um, you, want, you want to have that marbleized color of white and yellow, and a little bit of fun here. Yeah, sorry for the coloring on this. Um, there are like three different colors. I have daylight coming through the window. I have daylight LEDs above me, and then I have an incandescent bulb in the range hood, so the colors are way off here. The eggs look gross, but they tasted fantastic. Um, but yeah, here you can see where I, I was talking about the chopping. I, I like having the front edge flat, and it chops through eggs or ground beef or things like that, and makes for a really nice use in here. Stir it around, and then you can also scrape underneath things and flip them over, 
because it has that flate, that, uh, that smooth edge. You can get on it, flip it over, and work on it. A very useful tool for the kitchen. And then you can have your eggs. Happiness. <laughs> I was really happy with how this came out. I'm very pleased and looking forward to using it for a while. Here you can see a little bit of the chatoyancy popping through the wood. Uh, I tried to catch it on camera. There isn't a whole lot in this with the curl, but there is a little bit, and it does make it kind of nice. So, yeah, I am happy, and I hope you are too. Thanks for watching. So there you have it, a spatula, I am really happy. And Luke likes the eggs apparently, so. <laughs> yes, this was a fun one. I'm looking forward to using this for years and years to come. This is made out of hard maple, and I just kind of let my own ideas fall. I knew exactly what I wanted for the shape of the head, and I wanted the handle to feel a little organic. And so you can see this with the chatoyancy and the way it flows. I'm really, really happy, so. Looking forward to using it uh, for a long time. I hope you like this. If you do have any questions or ideas or uh, thoughts, anything I could do better or something you'd like to see, let me know down in the comments below. And as always, please share, like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. That's about it for now. Until next time, have a wonderful day. I had a really bad experience with spatulas and wooden spoons growing up. Don't ask me about it. <laughs>